got it to red line too, so that was great. Welcome back to the man machine. Welcome back to another fun-filled episode with some awesome cars. And welcome to a day dedicated to one of my friends, Neil, and his brand new 296. Wow, GTP. This is one heck of a specked out Ferrari. So thank you, Neil, for uh, giving me the opportunity to, to see what the 296 is all about. So we can give the audience, the viewers, a little taste of what the future holds when it comes to supercars, because this supercar is kind of special. It is the first in the Ferrari fleet to have a V6 twin turbo hybrid, meaning it has a battery, a twin turbo, and a V6. And guess how much power that thing is pushing? That thing is pushing over 800 horsepower. It's pretty much following suit to what Formula One's doing, making smaller motors, six cylinder with uh, batteries. And this is it in a beautifully shaped Ferrari form. And it is hot out here. I'm gonna be sweating, sweating pretty soon, so don't mind me. But let's just walk through this beautiful machine. Uh, uh, the paint, look at that, in the sunshine. That thing just glitters with gorgeousness. <laughs> that metallic and that blue. Uh, I didn't catch the name of the, the paint, so I'm gonna have to ask Neil after this. But uh, it is one choice color, and if you know from the last video that I did on Neil, up in the corner, <laughs> his A12 Competition and his other fleet, he does do some, uh, un I, I, I wouldn't say unusual, but not typical Ferrari colored cars. And this is definitely one of them. So, cool to see such a color on a Ferrari, but I think it's tastefully done with this black stripe in the middle. I've seen some other liveries where the front has like this, I guess, contrast pack with different uh, flavors. But uh, I like this single stripe better than that front, to be honest. That other 296 livery just is, doesn't sit well with me. But hey, I'm not a Ferrari owner, so I'm just a bystander just giving my opinion. <laughs> The uh, carbon on this car was done right. He's got the, the splitter, the side skirts, the wheels, and this is a tailor-made car. He had oh, locked the car, <laughs> didn't give me the keys so I can get in it, but <laughs> I'll get them from him in a minute. But uh, the front splitter, I don't think this is the Assetto package because I think this comes up and around on the Assetto package. If you look on the inside here, you can see a little bit of the traditional Ferrari uh, engine cover. Ooh, sounds like glass, but I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> Maybe it is. Comment below if you know if it's glass or uh, Luxon. Um, but yeah, you can see the motor right there. The turbos sit right with the motor and I think the battery as well. The exhaust sits here, right in the center, pretty nice. The spoiler is active arrow, but it sits right here. This little piece right here comes out and uh, I guess at like 150 gives you a little extra downforce. I think 100 kilograms, 200 pounds of downforce. And up front, these little vents right here help direct airflow to cool the brakes on the, the uh, front axle here. And here, the splitter directs, <laughs> I can't do it. It directs some air underneath and into the car. So it creates a, a, a high pressure area to help with the, the flow of air and the downforce. So this car has a lot going on to keep it planted with not only the aero, but also the meat on these tires. These tires are Bridgestone 305, 20 inches. And on the front, we got 20s as well, 245s. But I went on a little drive with this guy. <laughs> That's so good. And uh, 
mind you, Neil didn't get on it too hard, but whenever he did, you could feel the power. That 650 horsepower combustion engine with turbos pushing against the battery power of about 165 horsepower. Come on now, I think that's kind of cool. Now the question will become, with battery cars, you know, the reliability of batteries and how much they cost to replace and maintain. That always now is sitting in the back of my mind just because I've seen only a few scenarios where the prices can be significantly high and that's been on a P1 battery replacement of 165 grand and a SF90, I think a battery replacement was like 80 grand. So you're definitely spending pretty money to uh, get uh, the batteries correct uh, and maintained in these uh, cars if you want the power. But hey, like I said, Formula One power in a small chassis like that, pushing a weight of about 3,300 pounds. I think that's probably one of the heavier components is the battery. So even though we're going lighter engine and uh, small turbos, the, uh, the battery still plays a role in weight. But tell me what you guys think of the car. I think it's gorgeous. I'll do some B-roll now for you. Take a quick peek on the inside here um, because, uh, yeah, you got to see the inside, right? What does it look like? And from what I recall, it looks like the transition to the digital age. We got uh, all the uh, the uh, <laughs> the touch uh, little pad here, the haptic touch, and for the engine start. Let's see if we can just get the thing to show up. Oh, no key. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's hop in here real quick <laughs> and get a, it should sense a key hopefully sorry it's a little tight for me and Neil's uh, seating position but uh, you got the haptic touch you got a big old screen here you got carbon fiber with your auto manual switch you got your manantino with the digital for uh, switching between wet to race and uh, the coolest thing in the interior, I think, is that panel right there for the passenger. I think that's cool that they're starting to do that with a lot of the cars uh, in the Ferrari fleet. Even the first song way, they started with the A12. I don't know if they started with the A12. Maybe they started with the A12 and the SF90. But I think it's really cool. And also take, take a look back there. Can't really see the engine, but uh, hey, you got a window back there to look out for all your people. You're leaving in the dust. But uh, very cool stuff. We cut the start up and we'll get a little bit of driving for you with me. Not talking so much, but very nice and cozy in here. Nothing, like I said, too, too crazy from the standpoint of the interior creature comforts. But uh, yeah, the exterior is more what we're uh, oohing and on about. I got to, I guess, give them a hand on the, the touch of this outline on the seat there, a painted outline. It's pretty cool to see, but yeah, thank you, Neil, for letting me check out your 296 and taking me for a ride. It was a cool little car, and I think uh, I would actually consider buying one. I'm hearing that there's a lot on the market, so maybe this could be the first Ferrari instead of a Pista. It's a little bit cheaper, 800 horsepower. What do you guys think? 296? A lot of carbon bits, or maybe this one I think was in the 400 range. But they, they, I think they start around 340, 350, but adding all the extra carbon. Uh, you know, Ferrari, they do so many more add ons than Lamborghini, so 
I know the prices can keep way up there, especially tailor made, but what do you guys think? Should I buy one? Leave a comment and tell me. It's time to start making moves on this channel. More moves. <laughs> Smash subscribe, hit the like, turn on the notification, we'll see you in the next one. Racing.